welcome to everyone in this speech where I will describe you how to use digital technology to obtain a green data center and reduce the carbon emission of a data center. Why carbon emission? This is very important now because it's a hot topic, the climate change, anyone is uh, looking and see what is happening on the world heart. And there is some conference that discussed in the past about climate change, which you want to do, which can do, we can do, and so on. The starting point should be the Paris Agreement Roadmap. The Paris Agreement was an event from the United Nations that decided to arrive at zero emission in 2050. This is a very important goal and how we can arrive at this. There is some different uh, cooperation body that is looking at this. One is the Carbon Disclosure Project, that is a co uh, an activity, a group, that is helping co company to disclose their carbon emission due to their activity. There is a standard now to calculate and how to disclose of this number. The second body is the uh, Science Basic Target, SBTI, that is a group founded by CDP, by uh, URI, UNCG and other companies, that is uh, working to define a trajectory for the different industry like transport, uh, oil company and so on, on how to work to have a trajectory for the future for very CO2 emission to remain in 1.2 degree, depending on which trajectory of temperature increase respect to some years ago. Last year, in 2019, ITU, in collaboration with GSME, JZ, International Electric, Ag Electric Agency, Energy Agency, and SBTI, start to work on ICT sector and we define a trajectory for the ICT sector to remain in 1.5 degree trajectory. This work was concluded at the end of last year and was published as ITU L14770. It is now available, public available and free of download to anyone. Which is the importance of data center? Data center are very big consumption is considered that one data center, a big data center, not small data center, is a, a equal to the energy consumption of four big hydraulic power plants. And around the world is estimated that the consumption of energy in a data center is 400 billion kilowatt hours, so a very big amount of energy. What we look on data center, we look on what we call PUE, QE is uh, an indication of the usage of energy in the data center. As you see on the diagram, when you have a QE of 2.0, means that half of energy is used by your IT load, what really you want to have in the data center. All the rest of the energy is something that uses a very, very few portion, like light, uh, supervision, and so on. A 50% is uh, in the distribution of energy, in just energy waste, and the rest is used for the cooling. So practically is you pay 100 and you use only 50. This is what means 2.0 as PUE. Going on, okay, the PUE is one indicator, but it's not, uh, we think, the only indicator that we want, need to look. We want to look on what we call the free TS, in environmental protection scope. We need to look on bit, on VAT, and into it. And to reduce uh, all of this in the sense to reduce the power consumption to manage bit, this is mean that efficiency has no influence in QE, but have a big impact on the power consumption of the sun. On VAT, to reduce the loss of power during the, the management of the electric power, and the last is the heat, to reduce uh, the power consumption for the cooling of the data center. If you look in the QE, is the ratio with the total facility energy and the IT equipment energy, what I said before. So it's 
don't touch how much is efficiency they be. How we can achieve a better efficiency? Thinking on the bit side, we can think of changing some type of equipment, like, for example, in the storage, coming from traditional ADD uh, storage to sto flash storage. If you consider a Huawei solution, we can move from at the same capacity from 50 cabinet to 9 cabinet with a decrease of energy consumption of like 80%. But this is not only energy consumption, it's also material consumption, resource consumption. Also to build equip, I spend energy, I consume material and have a CO2 emission. So just only the fact to reduce the material and a good impact on the CO2 emission. The second point is on the computing, on the server, or what you want to say. If we think to a big artificial intelligence cluster to arrive at 256 petaflop, if we use a solution based on X86, I have 6,000 cabinets. So a very big amount of cabinet, and the consumption will be 40,000 kilowatts, so an incredible amount of energy. If we just use a different architecture, different solution, we go on the GPU solution, we reduce to 200 cabinet, so a very small amount of cabinet in respect to the other solution, and the consumption is around 1,300 kilo. If we go to NPU solution, we have only 60 cabinets, and the energy consumption is 700 kilo. So a very, very big increment of efficiency for the computation. The last is about the transmission, how to forward the data. One of the last solutions is 48 for 400 giga Ethernet slot. We mean in one cabinet we have 768 for 400 giga Ethernet chassis. So a very incredible amount capacity of managed transmission. And the traditional solution is that I have very few gigabit Ethernet, but in five cabinet is always the same. Reduce the number of resources that you use, the amount of resources that you need to use to build the product. And also the consumption will be decreased of 50%. So we can arrive at 0 0.15 watt for giga Ethernet is a very few amount of data to manage one giga internet. And now on the VAT, on the energy, how we can reduce the energy waste. In a, historically, he said if we use a coal power the transmission line and so on, we generate 800 watt at our my server we will arrive 100 watt. All the rest is lost. And it's uh, something that is not possible to maintain in this way. Okay, in the data center we cannot uh, manage the generation, the transmission to the data center, and so on. This is after the data center is put. But we can make it on the last part of what we are working, what we are considering, just maybe using efficiency UPS, or where UPS have an efficiency of a module of 97.5, and an efficiency of a complete UPS of 97.1. And enter from the input to the output, so a complete energy feature. This is a, a very high efficiency for UPS in dual conversion mode, and this is a, a very good saving because UPS is working all the day, all the year, so it's always on. And just 1% of um, increase on efficiency should be around 40,000 of saving for year. And is a, a big number in any case. Going home, if we consider the chain inside the data center from medium voltage to the ET load to the 12 volt used inside the CPU, we have the traditional solution, have a transformer, UPS, and switch, and so on, when we can arrive at 91% of energy. It is efficiency not so bad and not so high. Thinking on new solution going to solid based transformer and uh, solid state conformer and open computer project, we in the same change we can arrive at an efficiency of 94%. So 
a very good increment of efficiency on the just on the energy chain. Going on the heat, what is possible to do? What we propose? We propose to go on new material technique to raise the heat dissipation at border level. So we use a, a phase change material in the board to optimize the transfer of the heat from the chip to the dissipator. On this way we can reduce the temperature of the chip and have a better heat transfer. The second point is what we call supercooling. It is a different type of fan that creates no turbulence on the hair. The result, the result is to have a increases the flow of air inside the uh, server of the equipment, it reduces the noise acoustic emitted by the server, so that also is contributed to the environment, and reduces the energy efficiency of the fan. So this decreases the complete, the global consumption of the equipment. Going on on the cooling part, we are int introduced artificial intelligence routine on the cloud to control all the cooling of the data center. We collect data from all the cooling parts, the chiller, the pump, the tower, the fan, the UPS, the load, and so on. All the data, that is more than 700 data collected, will be transferred to the cloud. We select some aspect of the QE that we can characterize, so any uh, data that we collect need to be linked to QE to see which is its influence. We use this data on a machine learning algorithm as training model and as control uh, solution to look on which is the influence on QE. On this we define a model, then the model go back to the interference decision making, what we call this this is the intelligence that is located locally. And on this, we set all the parameters on the cooling solution to increase the QE. We obtain an increase of QE depending on the case around 80-15%. That in a big data center is a very big increase of the features. We see now a video that shows how it's working a little better detail, that is all the data is collected, send it to the cloud, the cloud make the modeling or the artificial intelligence modeling sure, define the algorithm. Then the algorithm, the model is released to the local data center and start to work. And the QE is optimized. If we look on what we realize to reduce the carbon emissions, to have low carbon practice. Here there is two examples. One is uh, Don Juan uh, solar power supply in our data center in uh, near Shenzhen, in which we use solar energy to power coal and natural cooling and uh, other type of not coil sources. Another solution is in one Gap Cloud Computing Center, we use a different type of cooling using not chiller water, but using indirect effect cooling and evaporative. This is also a way to reduce the consumption of the cooling and to reduce the carbon emission. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope that uh, you know, now know some technique to have a better green data center and contributed to the reduction of CO2 emission in the world by ICT.